Okay, so today we're going to talk about ray diagrams using curved mirrors. So this is a, a diagram of a curved mirror, and the mirror goes from here, somewhere in this general vicinity, let's say from about here to about here. And you'll notice that this portion of the mirror is actually implied to be a portion of a spherical reflective surface. So C uh, for concave mirrors, you see the center of curvature is labeled as C. So C would be a position inside this sphere. If, say, this were a metallic ball and it had a mirrored inside surface, and if it were also mirrored on the outside, then uh, this would be the concave side of the mirror, and this, if we were on the outside, would be the convex. So I always remember that caved in is shaped like a caved in part, convex is the other one. All right, so we're going to talk about how to draw ray diagrams using the center of curvature as a reference point and knowing what the, the center of curvature is actually just the radius of this spherical object if it were to be a sphere. So if you imagine the spherical ball and we just cut off a portion of it, now that we're going to deal with this, this is our mirror, our curved concave mirror we'll talk about first. Okay, uh, a point halfway from C to the mirrored surface, somewhere between C and here, is a line that we'll call a point that we'll call F. So this is F. And F is the focal point or focal length of the, uh, of the mirror, concave mirror. So I'm going to label this as F. And C, so F, F is one half C. So I'll put that down here. F equals C over. Let me make a straight line there. Over two. So the length of F is half the length of C. Okay, so for that scenario, then we're, what we're going to do is I'm going to draw an object on the screen and our object is going to be a an arrow and we'll just make it above this line the midline of the mirror this three line three that goes through C C and F or points on that midline that midline is called the principal axis so we're going to draw an object and our object is just going to be an arrow and it's going to be on the principal axis I drew an arrow so you can tell that there's a definite top and a definite bottom okay so in order to draw a, <clears throat> a ray diagram for an object in a curved mirror, we're going to need to draw three distinct rays. Ray number one is going to be from the top of the object. All of these will be from the top of the object, but ray number one will be parallel to the principal axis, to the mirror, and then it will reflect back through F. So ray number one will be pointed in this direction and it will come out this direction. Okay, so it's going in, bouncing off the mirror, coming back. So this will be the, the direction of ray number one. So down here, we'll call this ray number one. And um, that is, again, parallel to the principal axis and then reflected back through F. All right? Ray number two, I'll draw that in blue. Ray number two will reflect through F. Come on, straight line. There you go. Through F. And then back parallel to the principal axis. And again, this ray is going in this way and coming out this way. So ray number two is blue. And that one is through F to the mirror and then reflecting back parallel to the principal axis. Okay, Where those two combine, where they connect, 
where they intersect right here is actually the top of our image. But we're not done yet. I'm going to show you one more ray number three. And it's going to go from the top of the object right to the base of the mirror at where the principal axis intersects the mirror. Okay, so that's going to go right there at the point where the principal axis and the mirror intersect. So ray number three. Oh, yikes. Let's try that again. Oh, uh, no. Let's try that again. Uh, come on. Let's try again. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Ah, oh, this thing is temperamental. Okay, so ray number three is in green. And that one actually goes from the top of the object to the base of the mirror at the principal axis. And then you'll notice this is the incident angle. And then we're going to connect our reflected angle. And that's going to be equal to the incident angle. So ray number three will go in this direction and then it comes out this direction. Okay, and you'll notice that the incident angle is equal to the reflected angle and voila, looky right there, everything intersects at the exact same point. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take that Take the, chance, take the time to draw in our image. And our image goes from here to the principal axis. And voila, there's your image. So your image, you'll notice, is inverted. Like this is upright, this is upside down. And it's smaller, so this little distance here is shorter than this distance here. So we have an object that's outside of the center of curvature. It's going to produce an image that is inverted and smaller. Also worth noting, the object and the image are both on the same side of the mirror. That's different than if you look in the plane mirror at your house, you look in the bathroom mirror, you're here and your image is on the other side of the mirror over here. Well, there's a difference. Those are called Virtual and real images. So a real image is when the image and the object are on the same side of the mirror. A virtual image is when the image and the object are on opposite sides of the mirror. Okay, so it's important that you understand what a real image and a virtual image is. When, a, when the image and the object are on the same side, this is considered a real image. It could actually be collected on a piece of paper. Okay, so I'm going to show you one more thing. This is a nifty little shortcut, and I'm going to show you this because, well, I think it's worth looking at. We'll, we'll do this in magenta. And we'll make that the same width as our other rays. So what happens here is, notice ray number one is parallel to the principal axis and reflects back through F. Ray number two goes through F and then reflects back parallel to the principal axis. Ray number three, you'd actually have to measure. You know, we kind of eyeballed it here, but it, you're measuring it from, it goes from the top of the object to the base of the mirror where the principal axis meets, and that's your 
right there is your incident angle. And then your reflected angle would be the angle between the principal axis and the reflected ray for three. Where they all meet would then be the top of the image. So the shortcut for number three, I'm going to call 3B. Three B is from the top of the image or top of the object. I'm sorry. Through C will give you the same result. So th from the top of the object through C will land in the same spot. This is the shortcut to ray number three. So the shortcut for ray number three is to draw one from the top of the object through C and you land in the same spot. Okay? So that's your shortcut. So that's how to draw an image, a ray diagram for a curved mirror. So I posted for you a couple different um, worksheets from the physics classroom so that you can do these problems and uh, do the diagrams. So the diagrams that we talked about for this, ray diagrams, then, then I gave you another scenario where you're going to do some practice. So here's the center of curvature. Let's just look at this one for right now. We'll close this up. And this is the center of curvature C, and this is F. So let's draw an object right here. Let's make this um, change that. This C right here. And this is F. Notice F is halfway to the mirror from C, so this is half the length. So our first uh, first ray we're going to draw is going to be parallel to the principal axis from the top of the object, parallel to the principal axis, right to the mirror, boom, and then we're going to re reflect that back through F. Make sure we bump that over so it's through F. So that's ray number one and it's going to travel in this direction. Okay, then ray number two, we're going to make that in blue like we did before and we're going to pick it up from here and we're going to say, okay, let's go from the top of the image through F. And we reflect off the mirror, boom. And now we go back straight parallel to the principal axis. Okay, so this direction is going to be like so, and this is going to be like so. Then the third one, the third one is going to be from the top of the object to the base of the mirror, or the base of the principal axis, right where it meets the mirror. I'm going to say, okay, boom, we are cut, we are there. And then remember, this is our incident angle, so our reflected angle has to be equal. And the handy is we've already got two rays that, that uh, intersect there, so we can draw that without too much measuring. But technically, you would actually have to measure this one, so this angle and this angle should be equal. It's not, because you can see this is off by a little bit, but you get the idea. Now, where's the shortcut? We had a shortcut plan for this, so if we wanted to make a shortcut, our shortcut would be from the top of the object through C and right to the, oh, look, our, our diagram is off somehow, or this is why the shortcut doesn't always work, right? Sometimes the shortcut is awesome, sometimes no. So it could be a little bit, uh, a few different things why it didn't line up exactly right. But what we could say is that this is really where everything should be. We could be moving things from here to here. But that's why measuring that first couple, this one's probably not exactly parallel. So it's like maybe not off. But, but you get the idea. So now we've got three rays that are convergent on one spot. And now we're going to draw our object. And our object is going to be or I'm sorry, our image. Our image is going to be from here to here. And it's going to be perpendicular. And it's going to be upside down. So this is upside down and larger. Notice what happened. This is our object. Our image is now upside down and larger because we moved inside of C, but not to F yet. 
So inside of C, not to F, our image is inverted and larger. So principal axis is here, focal point is F, center of curvature is C, uh, radius of curvature as length R would be this from here to here, right? So all this stuff is explained and all in, in entered. But I want to make sure you understand that's how you're going to draw ray diagrams for curved mirrors. If you have questions on how to do the others, I'm going to show you over here. This is a handy dandy little project we got. We have in here the physics classroom, physics interactive. So the physics tutorial is here, physics interactives are here, da 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 da. We go down to uh, mirrors and re reflection and lenses, reflection and mirrors. Reflection and mirrors, do, 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 do. optics bench mirrors, bam. Look at that, launch interactive. Now we're here and we go, look, lenses and mirrors. And you click on this, and make it full screen. And now we say, here's our object and we don't want lens, we want a mirror. And so we want this object to be somewhere between, oh, whoa, halfway between 2F, which is their center of curvature, and F, which is the focal length. Look at that. Here was our object. Here's our image, inverted and larger, just like we imagined. Here's ray 1, 2, and 3. Turn off 2 and 1, or uh, 2 and 3, and now we got just ray 1, which is parallel and through F. Look at that. And then ray 2 is just through F and then back parallel. Look at that. And then ray 3, which is just this in... Uh, Angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. Bang, bang. Now all three of them are on. And look at that. They all intersect at the top of the image. Boom. Now what happens if we take our object and we move it to the other side? What in the world? Move it to the other side. Now we've got a convex mirror. We've got our object over here. But look, let's take off ray 2 and ray 3. Ray 1 parallel to the mirror, and then back through F. Wait, F is over here. So parallel to the mirror, and then back through F, through F. See how that goes? So you may have to refer back to this uh, uh, interactive in order to draw these other diagrams. So the second one is then through F. Oh, it would have gone through F, but it couldn't, couldn't get there. And then back through the parallel to the principal axis. So the back is what we did, 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 back, 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 right? So we're going to cr cross over. Here's 2F, boom, and then back through parallel to the principal axis. This is a dotted line. So then ray 3 is just where your incident angle is equal to your reflected angle, right at the base of the mirror, reflects back, 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 where all those backs correspond is where our image is. Notice that the image is upright, same as our object, and smaller. So there you go. That should be enough information for you to get through all the worksheets and uh, if you missed the recording earlier today that should catch you up and well we got stuff to do so hopefully that's good for you and we'll uh, see you on Friday.